I'm going to be making Minecraft, from the ground up, but as a 2D game. Now I know I'm not the first one to have this idea, but I really want to see how far I could take a project like this. But since Minecraft wasn't designed as a 2D game, certain features are going to have to be changed or redesigned altogether. So buckle up and enjoy this series, as I try and make 2D Minecraft. To start off our journey, I began by writing out some boilerplate code to get a window up and running. Now I'm going to be writing this game in C++, and without a game engine. So performance should hopefully be on our side. I am using a library though called SFML to handle graphics and other various things that 2D games require. Since our code is ready, if we compile and run the application, we now have our window created and ready for some action. Minecraft is a block game, and it needs some way of storing those blocks. The system Minecraft uses is called chunking. Chunking allows the game to split up a large world into smaller parts called chunks, and manage them individually. Some 2D games like Terraria don't use chunks, because the entire map is just one set size, so splitting it up isn't really necessary. Minecraft, however, has infinite generation. So having chunks is almost a necessity, as it allows the world to grow in size, chunk by chunk. So that's what our version is going to have. To implement a system like this, I began by writing out a class to represent a chunk. And within that class, it has a 2D array of integers, which represent different blocks in the game. I decided this array should be 16 by 256 blocks big, but I can always change the size later, if I decide to make the world even taller. Since I want to make sure that this is working though, I wrote up some functions to display the chunks, and filled in each block within the chunks with some random data. And if we run the program, you could see that our chunks are being read and displayed correctly. Amogus. Now Minecraft can't just render all of the chunks in the world, since that would be bad for performance, and completely unnecessary. So instead, it only renders the chunks that are nearby the player. In Minecraft, this is in the settings, and is known as its render distance. For our 2D version, however, the process is slightly different. The only chunks that we need to render are the ones that are currently viewable on screen. This process of removing the excess area from rendering is called clipping. Clipping allows us to have only a small portion of the world rendered at any time. It saves boatloads of time for our program, and allows it to run extremely quickly. Implementing this can be quite tricky though, but the basic idea is that wherever our camera is on the screen, we render out a certain distance from it, known as a clipping range. Here's what it looks like in action. As I move the camera around, the tiles get cut off at the edges, and only render a certain amount. Increasing the clipping range just enough though, allows this process to be seamless, so you wouldn't even know that it was going on to begin with. Now that we have some of the basics out of the way, let's implement the infinite generation I was talking about earlier. Now implementing this was a really fun thing to tackle, because of how simple and elegant the solution is. The idea is that the world keeps track of a list of chunks that are nearby it, and whenever the program updates, it checks to see if it is missing any of the chunks. If they are missing, they are generated and put into the list. So if you move into a new area, the chunks are automatically generated and added. Then, while the program is checking if any chunks are missing, it also checks if any of the chunks that are currently in the list are really far away from the camera. And if they are far enough away, they are removed from the list to free up room for new chunks. Here it is in action. And if I speed this up, you can see that our world keeps on going forever and ever. Now we've got a good start so far, but this doesn't look anything like Minecraft. So it's time to pirate, I mean borrow, some textures from the game. Now what I'm doing here is creating what is known as a texture atlas. A texture atlas is just a large sheet of textures that can be used instead of having every texture in its own file. The advantage of this is that whenever the blocks are being rendered, instead of switching from texture to texture, the program simply renders the part of the texture corresponding to the current block, saving lots of time and memory. Here is what it looks like. I decided to create the first few layers of the world so that you could see some different blocks, but we are just getting started. Now one of the most important things that is missing right now is lighting. Now if you've ever made games before, you probably know that lighting can be a bit of a pain. But thankfully since we are copying Minecraft, we can keep it pretty simple. 
Lighting isn't very realistic in Minecraft. In fact, the light that gets emitted is in a diamond shape instead of a circle. The reason why this is important is that normally, with lighting operations, there is a lot of trigonometry involved, which is a really bad thing for performance. But since we are using a simple shape, we won't need any fancy operations whatsoever. To start the code, I created a class that is the basis for all lights, which I call a light source. A light source is exactly what you think it is. It holds information about different lights. Now the way the lighting is going to work is that I put an array of color values into the chunk class that corresponds to each block. Then when the blocks get rendered, the blocks change color depending on this value within the array. Here's what it looks like if I set the color to blue for example. What this allows us to do is to color each block depending on how close it is to any number of light sources. So a brighter color means a brighter light. To demonstrate this, I created a light source that represents the sun and applied it to all of the tiles that are next to a solid block, but are part of the sky. And it works wonderfully. And the performance is still smooth. Now I'm sure you have realized it by now, but these lights don't have to just be shades. They can be any color you like. So in the future, when I add more light sources, I can fine tune the color of each one, unlike the actual Minecraft. Anyways, continuing with the lighting, you probably know that Minecraft not only has the blocky looking geometry lighting, but also smooth lighting as well. So I decided to try and implement smooth lighting. But it was kind of a mess. The idea of smooth lighting is that instead of coloring each block with one color, you color it with four. One for each corner of the block. The question though becomes, how do you determine what four colors should be used? Well, what I ended up doing is just picking the four colors corresponding to the blocks next to the original block, moving forward and down. This meant that the lighting was one block too far to the bottom right, so what I did is that I shifted the whole thing back half a block to compensate. And although it's not perfect, it turned out pretty nicely. The next thing I wanted to improve is the actual generation. Right now the terrain just follows a sine wave, which is boring. So let's spruce it up. We are going to use Perlin Noise to make it look nicer. What is Perlin Noise, you're asking? Well, Noise itself looks like this. Perlin Noise looks like this. See a difference? Instead of just having random height values that have nothing to do with each other, Perlin Noise has something called local coherence. So points that are close together have similar values. All that we have to do to apply this to our clone is just to simply set the height value of each tile depending on what is plopped out of our Perlin Noise function. And presto, not half bad looking terrain. Now I know Minecraft has fancier terrain and different biomes with different heights, but we will add those later. For now though, there is one more thing I want to add. Some nice little trees. There we go. Okay, maybe not like that. There. Now it's perfect. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of the series. Since this is going to be a long and difficult process, I want you guys to give me some advice on how I should go about designing and implementing the rest of the game. I'm not going to be making everything for Minecraft, but I want to add as much as I can handle. But if you have suggestions on whether or not there should be walls or not, or things of that nature, leave your suggestions in the comments below. Anyways, thanks for sticking to the end, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye